Habakkuk 2.4, Romans 1.17, Galatians 3.11, Hebrews 10.38, where it says in your Bibles, hallelujah, uh, in some form or fashion that the just shall live by faith. And then we read out of Hebrews 11.6 where it says that uh, without faith it is impossible to please him for they that come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we, we're continuing in our teaching, and tonight we're going to talk about faith sees the answer. Everybody say, say it. Faith sees the answer. Amen. Go with me, if you will, to the uh, fourth proverb. I'll tell you, you know, it's amazing um, that you may have heard something in the past. You may think, yeah, I've, got, I've heard that, I've got that. And I, I've just gone back and I'm list, I've been listening to uh, a number of times since the um, first of the year uh, the, the series by Brother Hagen called uh, The ABCs of Faith. And, um, and, and listening to that, I went, I missed that. Or I forgot that. You know, although I'd heard it, sat under, heard it from teaching for years, heard it teach faith for years. You know, was reminded or stirred up or even maybe missed it the last time. And uh, so it's never, it's never wrong to go back and rehearse things again and again and again. We just need to be Frosty Morn Christians. Amen. Some of you don't remember the old Frosty Morn commercials, but they used to come in, uh, you know, um, sing it over and over and over again, Frosty Morn. All right, anyway, they had Frosty Morn bacon and Frosty Morn hot dogs and Frosty Morn sausage, and I don't know if they're in business anymore. Probably some isolated place, wherever they were from, you know. Um, but you know, that was a little jingle. And uh, we need to just be, you know, over and over and over again. You know, let the Word of God abide in you continually. Amen? Proverbs 4, 20 through 22 says, My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them and health are medicine to all their flesh. So their health are medicine to all their flesh. Thank God that his words are life and they are medicine. Not what? To our spirits? Uh, actually, it says medicine to our flesh. Hallelujah. I tell you, you know, if people would just read the word, they'd do away with a lot of dumb doctrines. <laughs> dumb doctrines and dumb doctrine devils would be kicked out if we would just, people would just spend more time in the whole counsel of the word of God instead of what the denomination says or teaches or what somebody else told them or whatever and just put in the whole counsel of the word of God. Amen? Hallelujah. And so uh, it is imperative that we as believers keep the word of God before us so that we see ourselves the way the Word sees us or declares that we are. The Word of God is your mirror. Look over in James chapter 1. <clears throat> we'll pick up in verse 21. Um, James 1 verse 21. It says, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Now, you got to stop here. James chapter 1, verse 1 says, James, a servant uh, of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, my brethren, counted all joy. Who's he writing to in this letter? The brethren, the church. Who? The church, to the brethren. Verse 21, wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Who's he talking to? The brethren. The church. Now, how can you be totally free because you're under grace of everything that's filthy, everything that's superfluity of naughtiness and need to receive the, the grafted words able to save your souls. Now, obviously, souls and your spirit can't be the same thing because the spirit's already born again. And soul here is suke. It's talking about the, the soul of man and not the pneuma, the spirit of man. Amen. People, people will just run off on tangents and, and say things, and they don't, they don't consider the whole counsel of the word. 
Amen? You wouldn't be instructed to lay aside something if you wasn't any need in laying aside because you were already perfected. I remember one time um, back when I was at Ramah, uh, we had an instructor and um, you know, Brother Hagan had the book out on his book table, had the teaching series, Growing Up Spiritually. The CD, or back then it was a tape series, had the book, Growing Up Spiritually. He's teaching in class that when you're born again, you're completely spiritually grown up. Now, I'm not just saying that because I had a conversation with him after class. I'm a young Christian. I don't, I'm, I'm learning. I'm here to learn. And he starts showing me scriptures that shows us we're already grown up. Well, well, yeah. There's some things, you know, you're, you're, you're taking things out of context because the Bible says desire to sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Now, that was his last year of teaching. You don't teach <laughs> opposite <laughs> in a Bible school what the founder of the Bible school teaches. <laughs> it's just not smart. And, and here, here's the problem. A lot of times we, we think we know more than we know. We get a hold of a little bit of truth and we think we know everything. Now, you're just in, little wor you're just in your little world and you hadn't seen enough, you know. Uh, the, back, I bet, remember back in the, the early 90s, that whole Joshua generation teaching came out. All the young prophets and, and Joshua's were going to take over and the old guys were kicking out. Thank God the old guys hung around longer. Because those young whippersnappers were messed up. More messed up than we realized. Hallelujah. No, he's writing to the church and he tells them to lay aside all filthiness and superfluity of knowledge and receive with meekness the engrafted what? Word. Which is able to save your suke, your soul. Now, Romans, I know this isn't a teaching on the renewing of the mind, but you know, I, I'll be honest with you. If you're going to walk by faith, you need to renew your mind. And, you, and then we did say you can't have faith in your heart and doubt in your head and it'll still work, but you don't want to live that way. You understand what I'm saying? You, you want to get your mind renewed. Praise the Lord. Uh, but Paul says in Romans 12, 2, be not conformed. Now, the Greek word there for conform means to be fashioned or molded or shaped according to. Molded, fashioned, shaped according to. So don't be molded, shaped, or fashioned according to the world, but be ye transformed. Now, the Greek word for transformed is um, um, metamorpho which is where we get the English word metamorphosis from, okay? By the renewing of what? Not your spirit, but of your mind. E.W. Kenyon says in his writings, he says this, uh, he says that the Christian who does not renew his mind to the word of God will imitate a sinner. Well, isn't that what Paul just says here? He said, be not conformed to the world, but be metamorphosed, meta go through a metamorphosis by the renewing of your mind. Who's he talking to? Verse 1, 12, 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, talking to the church again. I said he's talking to the church again. Hello, I said he's talking to the church again. He's not talking to sinners. I beseech you therefore, sinners, by the mercies of God. No, 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 no. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, be not conformed. Don't be fashioned according to the world, but have a metamorphosis by the renewing of your mind. Amen. Why? The world thinks wrong. I said, the world thinks wrong. It has a different mindset. See, and then too many Christians don't take the time to renew their mind to the Word of God so that their thinking gets straightened out. Now, James says, what does he say? He says, lay apart the filthiness of superfluity, receive with meekness the engrafted Word which is able to save. <clears throat> now, remember, that the word save, sozo, the sozo word group is not limited to salvation, in, in other words, being born again or coming out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. It includes restoration. It includes deliverance. It includes healing. Uh, Dr. Schofield in his uh, study Bible uh, makes reference to the sozo word group and, and says both the Hebrew and the Greek words for salvation or save have imply and carry these meanings. Um, and I'd, I'd have to get a Schofield Bible and find that and stuff, but it's, it's in Dr. Schofield's Bible. And um, that to one denomination is like Brother Hagin's books to us. I mean, as Schofield said, it's the gospel. Okay? Hallelujah. So, but he says here that the, that the, the word of God will say, well, what did, James, what, did, what did Paul say in, to the church at Rome? 
Renew your mind. Well, how do you renew your mind? You renew your mind with the Word of God. That's what James is telling us. We receive with meekness the engrafted Word, which is able to save or restore or make whole your soul. Hallelujah. But, now listen, not just don't receive the Word of God and go, oh, I've heard the Word, I've heard the Word, I've heard the Word. But, be ye doers of the Word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Now Paul says here that the person who simply hears the word but does not act on it and put it into practice in his life is self-deceived. 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 The worst kind of deception you can have is self-deception. You can't get any more deceived than deceiving yourself. See? If someone else deceives you, uh, you're under the influence of their influence. Like you get somebody out from under their influence and you can get them out of that deception. Um, I remember when we first came to, to, the, to the church, we had, uh, there, was some, there was some young couples in the church. And uh, one of the couples, the, uh, the husband, was, was probably one of the most manipulative people I've ever met in my life. I mean, I just, just a manipulator. And, you know, and the, and the, listen, I'm going to tell you something. Manipulation is nothing but, and for, in the church, it's just Pentecostal witches. Warlocks. Manipulation is ungodly. It is, it is gaining influence in a person's life wrongly. You know. And uh, the other young couple, um, you know, were really under this person's influence. And, um, and I had to have, I, I, when this person, when, when finally the, the, the manipulator left. I called him on some things. I said, you can't do that. I'm not going to let you do that in this church. You know? Church has gone through a difficult time. It, it, need, it, needs, you know, it needs strength and health. And you're not going to do this in the church. You're not going to go around doing this stuff to people. He, oh, he got a revelation. He's supposed to leave. Amazing how people are always supposed to leave whenever you get, they get corrected. And, and I went to the other couple. I said, listen. And, and they live in the same apartment complex. They live like, like next door to each other, up downstairs from each other. I said, you just got to cut off all ties with them cause, cause, because this person has too much influence in your life. Now, one of, the, one, of the, one of the big things this person, this, this person said was, you can't be in the ministry and have children. I just showed up with Jessica. Hello. You can't, you can't serve God and have children. So his wife had been sterilized. So they couldn't have kids. But the other couple was under that influence. Now, they got out from under influence, and they've got kids. Four of them. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, I'm glad they did. I'm glad they found out you can serve God and have children. Amen. But that person's influence in their life was wrong. Amen. So that was, that was external deception. They were being deceived by another person. And that was a big thing. That was a big thing among uh, Christians at a period of time there. You know, you just don't need to have children. You got to serve God. And you know, I'm going to tell you, I, I, I don't, I don't want to be in their shoes when they get old. That's just the idea. You know, you know, I want to I be able to look and say, I got kids, I got grandkids, I got great grandkids coming home to see me. Praise the Lord. Amen. The joys of older age, ha- having family there and children to love on you. And, you know, you're the patriarch or matriarch of the group. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's a good thing. I said, it's a good thing. You know, and be fruitful and multiply. I got, I got a command for that. Amen. But that, see, that's external deception. <clears throat> Yet on the other hand, I've been around people who are self-deceived. And you, you, can't, you can't get them out from the, under the influence of that. Until you, unless you can get them to see, unless you can get them to admit they're wrong. And that's usually the wrong, that's what usually they won't do it. They won't admit they're wrong. See, when it's, when, it's, when it's external deception, if you can show the other person's wrong to the person that's being deceived, then they're, they're not, they're not, they don't have to deal with that I'm wrong. They were wrong. They had me deceived. Now I can see that and I, and I cut that off. But the person who's deceived themselves, it's a dangerous thing. It's a dangerous thing. And um, James says here, be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. There's a lot of people think because they go to a word church, or they fly around, follow Brother Copeland around, or they listen to uh, Keith Moore on television and radio, or they, they listen to Brother Creflo, or they're, they're getting the latest, hottest, newest, latest, greatest tape series and books and tapes and CDs and 
MP3 downloads from whoever, that they're all okay, although they're not doing anything. Hello. If any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Stop think about that man. God's trying to get something across to us. We got to act on the word. We got to live according to the word. Amen. Now he, he uses the analogy that if you don't do what you hear, you're just like a guy who goes and looks in the mirror and walks away and goes, oh man, did I, you know, did, did I coat my hair? Or, or what, what? How many of you have ever done that? Gone in the mirror, looked in the mirror, and walked away. Did, now, did I put on my makeup, ladies? Did I put on my eyeshadow? You got to go back and look again. Paul says, or I'm sorry, James says here, that the person who does not do the word is the same way that mirror is. You look at the word, and then you, because you're not doing it, you walk away, and you forget what the Bible says about you. If you're going to live by faith, you're going to live according to the word. You're going to live according to the word. Everybody say, living by faith is living according to the word. And I don't just mean the living word, Jesus Christ himself, that, you know, that we don't need a written Bible. I, that, I'm so tired of hearing that stupid junk. You're talking about opening up everybody for complete and total deception. Take away the written word from them and just tell them to live by what's on the inside of them. I've seen Christians with the written word come tell me that God told them to do such and such. And they don't even, it's so far out of the word of God, but the Lord told them to do it. Yeah, uh huh. Hogwash. Tommy rot. Bunk. Get this Brother Hagin, you come up with some old revelation. Eastern Carolinian settled Texas. Because every colloquial expression that comes from Texas, we use down home, we were here first. So all the Texas had to come from Eastern North Carolina. Hallelujah. Dad's not here to defend himself. So anyway. For behold himself and go this way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. What happens when you don't know who you are? You can't win. I said you can't win. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth. Everybody say continueth. That don't mean, you know, you run by and flip a page or grab one of those little cards out of the middle of the daily bread thing on the table. And I'm going to tell you, that little thing ain't going to get you, it's not going to put you over. But continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, what? This man shall be blessed in his deed. How, what's going to happen to the man who continues? Blessed. The man that continues there is going to be what? Blessed. Why? Because he's not a forgetful hearer. Amen. So we must keep our, you know, uh, we must see ourselves the way the Word sees us, but you won't do that unless you stay in the Word. What about people who don't have a Bible? Read it to them. If you're a preacher in that area, you're reading the Bible all the time. You read the whole thing. Then teach them how to read and write. Print, write Bibles in their language. Do what you got to do. Or teach them your language and give them English Bibles. Whatever you got to do. But don't cop out and say, they don't, we don't we need the written word anymore. My God. So let's keep, our, let's keep the, enough of the word. Well, not enough. Let's keep the word in us so we know who we are. Don't forget who we are. I'll tell you, the moment, the moment you don't see, go to Numbers. It's sitting in my notes, but I really need to go here right now. To the 13th chapter of the book of Numbers. I believe it's like the 33rd verse. Well, we'll just, we'll pick up, we'll pick up verse 26. Now, you know what's happened. They've chosen out spies to go into the land, spy out the land. And they're going to come back and bring back a report of what the land's like. And uh, they searched the land for 40 days. Verse 25, and they returned from serving, searching the land of the land after 40 days. They spent 40 days over there. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron, to all the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the wilderness of Paran, to, uh, to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them and the, unto the, all the congregation and showed them all the fruit of the land. And they took a cluster, of grapes, a cluster of grapes and put it on a staff between two people to carry it. 
Now, I've been to the grocery store a lot of times in my life. And I've walked out with a cluster of grapes. I ain't never walked out to my car with two bag boys with a pole over their shoulder with a cluster of grapes on it because it was so big. You usually walk out with it and back, about five other bags in this hand and three or four over in this hand and the grapes are in there somewhere in that plastic bag. Hello? All right. And they told her and said, We came into the land whither thou sentest, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Now, what did God say? You're going to bring it to a land that floweth with milk and honey. Watch out when you start using these words on the wrong side of the equation. It's one thing to say that I've been attacked this week, and nevertheless, the Lord's my healer. It's another to say, the Lord, it's just like the Lord said, nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And but listen, Caleb's trying to stop them. Just like Wigglesworth said one time, went to pray for somebody. And the man started, oh, now, Lord, help our soon-to-be bereaved sister. And she's about to venture through this difficult time in her life. And Wigglesworth starts shouting, shut up. Lord, stop him, Lord, stop him. He's filling the atmosphere with unbelief. Shut, shut the guy up and just threw him out of the room. Then raised the man up from the deathbed. I mean, the wife had already started joining. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, help me through this difficult time. And see, Caleb tried. And Caleb stilled the people. And before Moses said, let us go up at once. Possess it. For we are well able to overcome it. Wow, God had spoken to him and said, I'm bringing you to a land that flows of milk and honey. It didn't matter what the cities were like. It didn't matter what the people were like. It didn't matter anything. The, the, listen, he had a word from God. Caleb had a hold of it. But the men that went up with him, that's the other ten, not including Joshua, because we find out later that Joshua was with Caleb. But the men that went up with him, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Oh, Pastor Ed, I'm just telling it like it is. Oh, I'm just saying the way it really is. I'm being a realist. You're being an unbeliever. You're talking doubt. You're talking unbelief. Listen to what the Bible says about when they said it, when they spoke reality. And they brought up an evil report of the land. Well, they told it like it was, and God said in his word there was an evil report. Why? Because he'd already given a different report. What does it say in the book of Isaiah, I believe, chapter 50, uh, 52, right before we go into the 53rd chapter? And down there around verses 12 through 14, down through the end of that chapter. It says, Lord, who hath believed our report? Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Who hath, you know, we got that little course out of that. Whose report will you believe? We will believe the report of the Lord. Whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. All right. His report says, I am healed. Okay, anyway, good song. But the men that went out, we be not able. Well, God's already, it wasn't a question whether or not you were able. It's whether or not, is God, is God going to do what he said he would do? The people are strong on the way. So what? What's that got to do with it? They said there's no cure. What's that got to do with it? They said you'll never make it. What's that got to do with it? What did the Lord say? What is the report of the Lord? What did God say? Come on now. What did God say? So when they were realist and told it like it was, but the men that went up with them said, uh, <coughs> excuse me, let's get our religious words on. We be not able to go up against the people. They are stronger than we. We're just telling it like it is. God said they brought up an evil. Of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it. Listen to this. Boy, they got, they, they've gone on. Now, I don't know how they see this, except they began to add on to their negative report. The land through which we have gone to search it, it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people we saw in it are men of great stature. 
Well, they're, paint, they're painting the picture, aren't they? And we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which are come of the giants. And we were, you need to underline, if you don't underline anything else in this whole passage, underline this. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. They became grasshoppers in the sight of the giants because they had become grasshoppers in their own sight. <laughs> Are you here? We were in our own sight. But, but he who looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth it. For the man who look, who's a doer, hearer of the word and not a doer of the word is like a man who beholdeth himself in a glass and he walketh away and forget what manner of man he was. Oh, ha, ha. Hallelujah. Now, this is the same bunch. Now, think about this now. This is the same bunch of just a, just a couple of weeks or so before. Y'all hear? Saw God deliver them out of Egypt with plagues, miracles, signs, wonders, and deliver them out of that place. And they get over here and spend 40 days running around looking at some big dudes. God didn't say, God never intended for them to win the battle on their own strength. If you'll study this out a little bit, and I, I need to find these references for you. Um, later on, when they finally get over there 40 years later, all the people were wondering what took them so long. What took y'all so, basically, uh, what took y'all so long? Hello? 40 years I've been waiting for y'all to show up and clean our clock. Why? Because they had heard of their God. The people, were, the people who possessed the land were not afraid of the Israelites because of their great stature or their great warrior abilities. They were afraid of their God. That their God fought for them. That their God went before them. Hello. That's what they were afraid of. Hello. But see, when you begin to forget who you are in Christ, where you can say, greater is he that's in me, glory to God, than he that's in the world, hallelujah. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me, glory to God. Amen? Or through the strength of the one who infuses me with his strength. Uh, one, I, I believe the um, one translation, well, not, I believe, I know one translation says it that way. Maybe Weymouth or Weist. Um, says, I, I, can, I can do all things through the strength, uh, through the one who strengthens me with his, who infuses me with his strength. You have to see yourself the way the Bible sees you. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. But they got over there and said, we can't take these guys. They're bigger than us. Oh, there's the giants. Well, David proved you could take a giant down. They could have done it back then. As a matter of fact, they could have cleaned clock. We would never had the story of David and the giant, David and Goliath. They could have gone on in and taken the giants out to begin with. <clears throat> Hello? But the difference between this story and the giants and David and Goliath is I do not come to you with a sword and a spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts of Israel. And this day I'll feed your carcass to the fowls of the air. Amen? Amen? David had a different story. David had a different image. David had a different insight. He didn't see himself as a grasshopper. Hello? He saw himself mighty under the hand of God. Amen? So, we must see ourselves the way the Word sees us. They did not go. Let's look, let's look at the next two verses. Chapter 14. I hadn't intended going here, but it's good preaching anyhow. Although I'm sitting down on a stool for Wednesday night Bible study. That's still good teaching or whatever. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. And the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, <coughs> Would God we had died in the land of Egypt? Or would God... 
we had died in this wilderness. And who, where, uh, wherefore hath the Lord brought us out to this land uh, to fall on by the sword that our wives and children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return to Egypt? Let us make another captain and go back into Egypt. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Some people, uh, some people say that the children of Israel died in the wilderness because of judgment. The children of Israel died in the wilderness because they said it. They prayed to God. With God, they're praying to God. Either we go back to Egypt and die or we die in this wilderness. And God said, okay. They died. All the ones who lifted up their voice over the age of 20 died in that wilderness. Only Caleb and Joshua did not lift up their voice in this congregational sing song. Murmuring against Moses and Aaron. Everyone over the age of 20 that was particularly us got what they said. Their image was grasshoppers. Their image was defeat. And their desire was to die in the wilderness. That's exactly what they did. They got exactly. I'm not teaching on confession, but they got exactly what they said. Let me tell you something. When it was time to go in the next time, when all the young guys had grown up, you didn't hear one single one of them saying anything. <laughs> I bet you they had it rehearsed before them for 40 years. Watch what you say. Because you'll get it. Hello. I said hello. Yeah. And then Joshua and Caleb goes on and says they tried to, uh, they rent their clothes. Verse 7, they spake unto the children of Israel, the land which we uh, passed through to search is an exceeding good land that the Lord delighting us that he will bring us into the land and give it us a land that flows with milk and honey. Only rebel not against the Lord. Neither fear ye the people of the land for they are, listen, listen to what Joshua and Caleb said. They're bred for us. Their defense is is departed from them, and the Lord is with them. Fear them not. I, I love the, think about Caleb, he's about 40 years old here. And 40 years later they go in, and then after five years of, of doing stuff, he finally comes back to Joshua and says, now look, when I came out 45 years ago, I told Moses about a mountain I wanted. Now there are giants on that mountain, but you know what? Give me my mountain. And he went and killed him through the giants off his mountain at 85. He took him down. Why? Their defense had departed from them 45 years earlier. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. I'm telling you too often time, we are waiting for God to do something and we're whining about why it hadn't happened and we're whining about why we can't get somewhere and the defense of the enemy has already departed from them. It's just time for us to go in and take the land. Glory to God. Amen. And listen what happened when the faith people started talking. But all the congregation made stone them with stones. They're going to kill them for talking faith. Well, <laughs> people do that today. <laughs> Are you here? There's still people who act like that today. You start talking faith, they'll get mad at you. You start talking healing, they'll get mad at you. You start talking prosperity, they'll get mad at you. It's the same spirit that's on the children of Israel. It's fear. Not, they haven't seen who they are in the, in, in the Word. The only thing that stopped them was the glory of the Lord appeared and, and, and the, it scared the daylights out of them. Hello. And then, then Moses had to intercede for them because God was going to wipe them all out right then. Just get out of the way. I'm going to cook them on the spot. Hello. We'll just send you and Joshua and Caleb and your wife, y'all's wives stuff over on the end there. <laughs> We're going to cook the rest of them. Oh, my. And so, we have to understand, we have to see ourselves the way the works is and not how circumstances dictate to us. Not how everything around us is. We have to see us the way the works is and not let our minds, our un see, when your mind's unrenewed and you're not being a doer of the word. Remember back over in James it says, but be a doer of the word and not here only deceiving your own selves. But who, who, so, who so looketh, going back over to James now, whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this man should be blessed in his deed. This man should be blessed in his deed. Say, this man, the man who, who, who does the word, is blessed in his deed. Hallelujah. So keeping the word before us so that we see who we are in Christ. 
what we have in Christ, what belongs to us in Christ, what we can do through Christ. Having that in us and living in us and doing and acting on it makes the difference between blessing and cursing. Deception and blessing. Amen. Had, the, had those other ten, let me tell you something now. See, now people can be finicky. That's why you, I'm going to tell you something. Just because there's a bunch of people saying something don't make it right. Ten out 12 spies, two come back with the right report or, or, or maintaining the proper report. Ten come back with a different report and change the whole congregation. Because the majority had a different report. God said it was an evil report. It didn't matter. I'm going to tell you something. Something I've, I've built my ministry on over the years. And you know this. You've been here with it long enough. And I don't care how many preachers, people are preaching something. If, it, if it's not the Bible and it's not consistent, I don't hop on it just because a bunch of people are preaching it. I don't care who's preaching it. I said, I don't care who's preaching it. Hello? I don't care what their name is. I don't care how big their ministry is. I don't care how many people support their ministry. If what they're teaching isn't in the Bible, I don't follow it. People get mad at you. Are you not doing what brother so-and-so is doing? I don't care. I, said, I can't find that in the Bible. I said, I can't find, if I can't find that in the Bible, we're not, I'm not going to teach it. I'm not going to preach it. We're not going to act on it. Amen. Can y'all say amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we've got to be hearers, not only hearers, but doers of the word. Amen. So we have to keep the word before us so that we see ourselves the way the word sees us. And then when we are looking at our, am I done with that, Lord? I, I was getting ready to move on, but I'm just not sure I'm done with that. Hallelujah. So we come over into the New Testament. Hallelujah. And we start getting things like from 1 John. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. We get things from the Apostle Paul. We write to the church at Rome. He says, I can do all things. Well, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Maybe when he wrote the Philippians. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes, that's in Philippians. Amen. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. Amen. Amen. Um, now, I'm, I'm, I've, heard people t I've heard people testify, or not testify, but, but try. I can do all things. I can do all things. I can do all No, no, no. I can't do all things. I'm not depending upon the flesh. No, I'm depending on the resurrected one. I'm depending on the greater one who resides on the inside. The one that rises up, hallelujah, in the hour, glory to God, when I have a need and I look, on to, I look to the great one on the inside. You know, I know there's an Old, Old Testament psalm that says, I'll look unto the Lord, unto the hills from whence cometh my salvation. We ain't looking at hills anymore. Hallelujah. I said, are you here? We're not looking at the hills anymore. He's not coming out of the hills. He said, he, he said Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open the door, I and my father will come in and, and, and sup with him, make our abode with him. John says, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Greater glory to God. Amen. I said, glory to God. And so when I'm in, test, in, in the middle of a test or a trial, when I'm in the middle of facing a battle, glory to God, I look down to the greater one on the inside, hallelujah, and he rises up with the strength and the might that I need, glory to God, hallelujah. Praise God, I'm about fed up with sitting on that thing right now. Hallelujah. He rises up with the strength that I need. He rises up in the power that I need, praise God. He rises up with the answer, hallelujah. For the word of God says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Yeah. Glory to God. And I can look to him. Oh, hallelujah. The everlasting flow of strength and might and power. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When I look into the word and I see that the greater one indwells me, hallelujah, that I can do all things through him, through Christ, through the anointed one and his anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where does he abide? He abides in me. But ye have an unction from the Holy One. Praise God. John, 1 John chapter 1 says ye have an unction. Amen? From the Holy One. And needeth a man teach you. Then he goes on that same chapter and says, But the anointing which abideth 
Oh, glory to God. When I look into the Word of God, I find out that He's already on the inside of me. All the strength that I need and all the might that I need to win the battle is already resident on the inside of me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I just look to the greater one. Hallelujah. And when I look to him, I'm like, oh, praise God. Thank God I've been looking into his perfect law of liberty. Thank God I've been a doer of the word. Hallelujah. Thank God that, that when I, yeah, because I've done that, that when I have the need of him, he rises up. Oh, I said he rises up. And he puts me over. And my testimony Glory to God. And my confession is not the testimony or the confession of defeat. But it is the testimony and confession. Glory to God. Of what thus saith the word of God. What God has spoken to me. Praise God. That I have the answer. Praise God. Because the greater one abides. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can you say amen? I said he abides on the inside. I don't hook up with the evil report of the ten spies who said we be not able for the people are greater. No, I hook up with the word of God that says greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Glory to God. Now y'all should be shouting about me. I know it's Wednesday night Bible study, but I had to stand up. I, could, I couldn't take it anymore. I was about ready to run around the room. My, 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 my. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just get, just that you can, that wasn't a sitting down session. I had to get up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. When we know who we are, when we know what the word says about us, and we're doing it, not just hearing it, giants can come. But we already have the answer. They come against me, Satan, with a sword and a spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts of Israel. I come to you in the name of the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. Today will be the day you wish you hadn't woke up and messed with me. Because I'm looking to the one. Oh, 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 thank God we can look to the one. I said, thank God we can look to the one who abides inside. What? Know ye not that you're the temple of the Holy Ghost? <laughs> Ooh, my, 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 my. I said, my, 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 my. Know ye not that you're the temple of the Holy Ghost? Oh, my dear brothers and sisters, if we would just get a hold of that and continue in that, days would be different. Battles would be different. Tests and trials would be different. Because you would know every time going in and facing those things, you've already got the answer. <laughs> you've already got the answer. You've already got the answer. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because there's one mightier who has come. Ooh, I don't know about you. I just about preached myself happy. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, my, 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 my. If we could just get that across to people. Get that across to you. <clears throat> Victory would be your daily slogan. Amen. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. According to the word, I have what I heard. Victory today is mine. Hallelujah. I got off on all that because I said I can do all things. Some people say I can do all things. I can do all things. No! I can do all things because on the inside of me abideth the greater one. I just look to him. I said, I just look to him. Ooh, there's a strong anointing in here. If you'll just, just kind of get your mind right and settle back and just let the Spirit of God bring, bring fresh revelation concerning these things to you. Hallelujah. Just look to the inside to the greater one. He rises. 
and he does what he does. Empowers me. He empowers me. Who's, who's got an amplified? I know Benny has an amplified. Uh, ben, put Philippians 4.13 up in the amplified. That's where it comes from. I, I, if he gets up on the board, I'll, I'll, you know, real quick, I'll just, I'll just use that. Philippians 4.13, the Amplified word, it's, 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 I just love it. Glory to God. And we're moving along here. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Got it, bro? There we go. I have th strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. This is, this is, here, here's here's the, 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 uh, the Amplified's you know, commentary, basically. The expansion. I'm ready for anything and equal to anything through him. Who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I'm, I'm ready for it. One, one, one translation says I'm ready for any challenge. He, he's in me. He infuses inner strength in me. And me, you know, um, Philippians 4 Right, right above this, two verses up. Not that I speak in respect to want, for I've, I've learned that whatever state I am, therein to be content. Now, the 20th century translation of Philippians 4.11 says this. I've learned to be independent of the circumstances. Why are we independent? Because there's one infusing inner strength into us. Oh, there's one infusing inner strength into us. Glory to God. But you won't know that unless you look into the perfect law of liberty. And continue therein. Amen. I said amen. Oh, brothers and sisters. We need to move on from these things. We need to go into deeper things. I'm going to tell you, you can't get any deeper than being in Christ. I don't need a sermon so deep, can't anybody understand it? I don't need some special revelations about five changes of clothes and five different anointings. That somebody just pulled out of the air. That lukewarm or cold, I mean, uh, lukewarm, I mean, lukewarm Christians or cold Christians or hot Christians is a mixing of two covenants. And everybody gets all excited about it. People get excited about dumb stuff. You ought to be getting excited about there's a greater one on the inside. Amen. You should be excited about knowing that you can just look to the greater one. Hallelujah. And he'll rise up and put you over. Instead of running around worried about, you know, what covenant you're under. You mixed them. Just because some yo-yo said they were. That's the way it was. I mean, when people just pull stuff out of the air, forget it. Just go on. Get, get, forget that stupid stuff. Now, if you, now, those of you been with us, did I, did I go after warring tongues? Did I go after the army of the Lord? Did we rent helicopters and fly around Greensboro? Hello? Are you here? We didn't come here in army fatigues and camouflage saying we're the army of the Lord. We didn't scream at the devil for hours. Y'all hear you going home? We didn't go rent the Jefferson Pilot building top floor and go out there and war against devils. We didn't go after that doctrine. We didn't go after this doctrine. We just stayed. Why? Because staying with the fundamental basics of the Word of God, who you are in Christ, growing in those things, being blessed because of it, and helping other people walk in those things is, where, is, is the foundation you need to live in. This other stuff's just stupid. And it derails people. People think they're doing something, screaming to their horse at the devil. Yeah, you don't have to scream at the devil. Authority is not based on how loud you shout. Authority is based on what you know. The centurion said, speak the word only. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goeth. To this one, come, and he cometh. To another, do it, do this, and he doeth it. So just speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Didn't say scream it. Just speak it. See, authority is not based on how loud you are. It's based on what you know. Amen. 
People got crazy, screaming at the devil. We should have been meditating on who we are in Christ. Then you can just walk up to the devil and say, come out, come out of him in Jesus' name and go. If anything else that needs to be dealt with, the Holy Ghost can reveal it to you. You don't have to scream to your horse. Amen. Oh, my, 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 my. I've done gone meddling now. No, if we know who we are in Christ. I'm telling you, when we know what the Word says about us, And what the Word tells us to do. Let me say, the Word tells you who you are and then it tells you what to do. You know, the Bible tells you to put off the old man and put on the new man. What's that mean? I may be in Christ, but there's things, things I need to deal with in my life according to the Word. I need to do it. Be a doer of the Word. It doesn't affect, it, you know. Listen, God, God wants you to be a doer of the Word. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to run off here, but I, I'm going to leave it right there. I'm just going to leave it there tonight.